Well, I've just launched from the marina at Yapoon. Uh, this is day one on my epic 1,000 kilometer solo kayak fishing trip. And it's looking like pretty good conditions today after a shocker yesterday. It was supposed to launch yesterday, but it was raining too hard. Conditions quickly deteriorated soon after I launched. By day's end, they were horrid, and it was much worse the following day. Unfortunately, this spot was almost 20 kilometers short of where I'd hoped to be by now, and I got caught here the following day as well, unable to proceed due to worsening conditions. Weather for the following day wasn't a whole lot better, but after now losing a full day, I really had to make tracks. From this point onwards I was always fighting the clock and tidal currents at their mercy almost the entire time. It soon became all about making as much ground as possible with the incoming tide and then doing your best to be on land before it turned. Most of the coastline I passed looked a lot like this. And a couple of the landings looked like this. But mostly, they look like this. And launching usually look like this. For the most part, sailing from A to B look much like this. Always fighting the clock and tides, I only got a few opportunities to fish on the move. But from all reports, the fish had been shut down along the entire coastline for weeks. It's day six, and I'm still 56 kilometers away from Stanage Bay, which is a bit of a disaster, really. I was supposed to be there on day three, and no doubt Shep is gonna be pretty worried about me right now. So I'm gonna try and make it there in one run today. It's fairly early. I'm about to head off. The seas are looking very calm, and there's no wind. Looks like I could be doing a lot of pedaling. I do have a plan B even a disaster route plan C. I'm not sure how I'm gonna go. It's 56 kilometers as the crow flies. It's gonna be more like 80 the way that I have to go to get there. So this is gonna be hard work. I don't have my rods on board. I've taken them off because I don't want any wind resistance and most of the waters that I'm traversing today are in Murray National Park anyway. Even if they weren't, I wouldn't have time to stop and fish. Let's go. Well, I've entered this body of water called Strong Tide Passage and this was a risk heading down here because I wasn't sure quite what it was going to be like and true to its name the tide in through here is just incredible at the moment I'm drifting along against the wind the winds coming this way it's coming hard too and at the moment I'm drifting along at 11 kilometers an hour it probably doesn't look it it doesn't feel it but I am and that's a good thing because I want to get through here as quick as I can before the tide changes. When I get out into the other side, I'm going to be in the, uh, the main stretch and hopefully I'll be able to uh, sail into this tide as I turn into the north towards Stanage. And if I can, I'll probably make this pretty easy. I've been lucky so far. As soon as I got into Shoalwater Bay, the water and wind became a lot rougher. With a good 50 kilometres plus to go and already feeling the chill, I doubled up on waterproof and windproof layers before making the final run. Well, what a monumental crossing that was. I got over Shoalwater Bay, I got through Strong Tide Passage and uh, all up I think I've traversed about 75, maybe 80 kilometres. It's been pretty hectic. Uh, it doesn't look it now as I come into Stanage. 
I think I can see Shep's boat up in front of, ahead. It's hard to tell from here, I'm still a few hundred metres away. But uh, gee, I'm glad to be here. It's a real relief, <laughs> let me tell you. It was a bit of a worry. This expedition was now starting to feel cursed from the beginning. And this was the final omen telling me to bring it to an end. Kayak fishing expeditions always go smoother with friends at your side. Our annual trip to Fraser Island is the consummate example. Once again accompanied by Carl, Holger and Paulo, this year we played tour guides to Rhett and Shep. And boy did we give these boys the tour of their lives. Hooked a pretty good fish here. Fraser Island. This is why we come here. Could be a Trevelli. Big and strong one if it is. Could be a long tailed tuna. Could be a Spanish mackerel. It could even be a marlin. Small baby black marlin. They're getting around here at the moment. Boy, oh boy, this thing's taking some wine. As usual, we hooked up to a lot of fish, especially on the first few days. Most of these hookups were marlin, our lures getting smashed while trawling. Converting these hookups to landed fish was a challenge to say the least though, but one of us was up to it. has hooked one of these marlin over here and he's managed to keep it on. It's been going for about five minutes now. Looks like he might get this fish in or he might not. <laughs> Nicely done. Nicely done. Oh, look at that. <laughs> well done, Holger. Got a marlin. Good work, mate. How that freaking is a beauty. Cool is that? that is an absolute ripper. Well done. Go on through this man a cigar. <laughs> nice. It's a tuna. Yeah. Long tail tuna. I believe so. Yeah, it looks like it from here. It's a big fish. It's a big fish. That's not a tuna. That's a, uh, that's, it's a big trevally. Yeah? That's a golden trevally, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mate. Tail grab it. Whoa, there's something underneath it. There's a shark underneath it. Oh, really? Yep. Yep. 
It's right underneath me, whatever it is. Maybe it's a shark. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> it swam right underneath me. Anyway, let's concentrate on your fish. That's a beauty, mate. Woohoo! Power grab it, mate. There you go. There you go. Nice oh, fish. <laughs> Beautiful fish. Nice. The Rapala CD Magnum as well. Yep. Again. Nice work, mate. Beauty. Big fish. Yeah. Oh yeah. You can grab them by the tail if it's a golden. It is, yeah. Oh yeah. The marlin backed off after a couple of days, but at least there were Trevelli to take their place, Shep proving their greatest predator. Brett and I kept the group fed for the week, accounting for most of the keeper fish throughout, putting in a tag team effort on Spanish and spotted mackerel. I've hooked up to a good fish here. We've finally found some tuna and Paulo's got one in and I believe I've got one on here too. He's hooked a Rapala X-Wrap. I've rigged it with a single jigging hook and it's done the trick. <laughs> I think I've hooked it pretty good. The amount of fish we've lost on this trip has been uncanny. The amount of them that have been marlin has been quite surprising. It's been fun chasing them. Oh, it's fun fishing out here at Fraser Island. It's a fishing paradise. It's a big body of water. It's a huge, gigantic paddle field. That is a Mac tuna. It's a decent size too. Not the long tail I was hoping for. But that is a good fish. Come on, babe. 
Oh yeah, that is a nice fish. Let's get you the hooks, pal, and back into the ocean. It wasn't until the final day that we went out wide and it was here that we found our beloved tuna. Here Carl demonstrates just how tricky it can be to land a large long tail tuna on a kayak. that wasn't enough to convince you of how belligerent these long tail can be, observe Exhibit B and C courtesy of Paulo.